Welcome to our daily devotion. The Methodist Church of Barbados invites you to sing, pray, and worship with us as we declare God's glory and celebrate His mighty acts. Father and our God, from the rising of the sun until the going down of the same, you are high above all the earth. You are exalted above all gods. Your name is high above all names, and we exalt thee. We exalt your name, O God, because you are faithful, you are righteous, and you are holy. And we exalt you because your name is worthy of all honor, glory, and praise. Father God, you have set your heart upon us and called us your treasured possessions. What a privilege it is to be known by you, to be loved by you, and to be treasured by you. Not because of who we are, but because of who you are. You are the God who forgives all iniquity, the God who heals all our diseases. You redeem our lives from the pit, crown us with steadfast love and mercy. You, Jehovah God, is the God who satisfies with good as long as we live, so that our youth is renewed like the eagles. And you, O Lord, are merciful and gracious. 
slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. You will not always accuse, nor will you keep your anger forever. Neither do you deal with us according to our sins, nor repay us according to our iniquities. For as the heavens are high above the earth, so great is your steadfast love toward who fear you. And as far as the east is from the west, so far do you remove our transgressions from us. Father, even as we consider all the ways that you pour out your love and mercy on us, we confess, O oh God, that it is out of selfishness and ignorance that causes us to lean onto our own understanding, and we end up falling short of your glory. And for that, we ask that you in your mercy will forgive us. Father, for not consulting with you and seeking to make life decisions on our own, forgive us, we pray. For walking by sight and not in faith, Forgive us, Lord, we pray, for justifying the wrong we do and calling it right. Forgive us, Lord, we pray, for seeking to place our own needs above others, for straying away from you, our first love, and for not walking in a manner worthy of our call. Forgive us, Lord, we pray. You have said in your word that he who the Son sets free is free indeed. And so, Father, we thank you that through the sacrifice and the shed blood of Jesus Christ, we can experience the power of forgiveness and that we can be fully reconciled with you. Grant unto us newness of life in the glory of your name. Father God, we thank you for all the many ways in which you are calling us to reset as we seek to carry out the work that you have called us to do. For the many dreams and visions that have been and continue to unfold in your name and for your sake, we bless you for the many lives that have been impacted through this online ministry and for all who work faithfully in ensuring that each and every production is done with excellence and unto you. May all who continue to gather here each evening continue to be blessed beyond measure. Father, let your spirit fill this place, and may all that we say and do bring honor and glory to you alone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen.
we turn now to a reading of his holy word, which comes to us from the gospel according to St. John chapter 21, verses 15 to 19. Glory to you, O God. When they had finished breakfast, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my lambs. A second time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He said to him, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Tend my sheep. He said to him the third time, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter felt hurt because he said to him the third time, Do you love me? And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Jesus said to him, Feed my sheep. Very truly I tell you, when you were younger, you used to fasten your own belt and to go wherever you wished. But when you grow old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will fasten a belt around you and take you where you do not wish to go. He said this to indicate the kind of death by which he would glorify God. After this, he said to him, follow me. This is the gospel of Christ. Praise be to Christ, our Lord. My brothers and sisters in Christ, I speak to you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. At the Last Supper, Jesus prophesied that Simon Peter would deny him, not once, but three times. Of course, at that time, Peter was adamant that it could never happen. And perhaps the underlying reason for him cutting off the ear of the soldier during Jesus' arrest was to prove his loyalty to Christ. When it all became real that Jesus was going to die, Peter began to slowly distance himself. And when someone in the crowd recognized him as one of Jesus' followers, Peter did what he said he would never do. And before the cock crowed thrice, Peter denied his Lord and Savior. This must have caused him to be devastated beyond words, but he found the strength somehow to carry on. Not only that, after the death of Jesus, he managed to find his way back into company with the other disciples. Peter was one of the two disciples who ran to the tomb when Mary announced that Jesus was no longer there. And on this occasion, Jesus appears to seven of his disciples and Simon Peter is named among them. 
Maybe Peter felt that with Jesus gone, he would remain close to the other followers, which probably gave him some semblance of comfort and peace. At this post-resurrection meal, Peter comes face to face with the one whose trust he had broken. I believe that Peter must have had a mixed emotion of joy and guilt when Jesus' identity was revealed as the one standing before them on the beach, living proof of what he spoke to them about regarding his resurrection. Jesus showing up must have also caused Peter's mind to race with thoughts of his denial, feelings of condemnation for what he'd done, and perhaps he felt that Jesus was there to even the score by chastising him. In verse 15, it tells us that when they had finished breakfast, Jesus called Peter by his full name and identity, Simon Peter, Simon, son of John bringing his full attention to Jesus in that moment where he probably feared that the worst was to come. Beloved, when we allow sin to separate us from Christ, it will cause us much pain and inner turmoil. We may, like Peter, try to soothe ourselves by staying connected to someone or something that is a representation of Christ. The wonderful thing about Jesus Christ is that he does not always wait for us to come to him and he will instead come to us, not to chastise, but to remind us that he died so that we might be forgiven. Very often persons remain in a state of brokenness and miss the opportunity of being healed and restored simply because of the fear that having to face Jesus might result in a rebuke that they are unable to bear. And today, Christ is saying to us that we must avail ourselves to experience a personal encounter with him, especially when we fall. The veil in the temple was torn in two to symbolize that we have direct access to the throne of grace. Therefore, why settle for comfortably staying connected to that which is connected to Christ when he have made a way for us to be reconciled with him and to remain connected to him, the one who restores our souls and is our eternal source. One moment Peter was walking with the Lord and in the next he found himself walking away from him. But here was Jesus meeting him where he was at and bringing him back to the fold. Similarly for us, one moment we are on the mountain top and the next you can find yourself face down in the valley. And it is the enemy who delights when we find ourselves on the wrong side of Jesus' will. The enemy will invade our thoughts trying to convince us that we will be admonished for failure. The enemy will also sow seeds of doubt that Jesus' shed blood can never cleanse us from all our sins. Beloved, our dear Lord and Savior reminds us that there is nothing that can separate us from the love of God in Him. And because each and every one of us have been sealed and set apart to be used by Christ for his glory. He promises that his grace will reach even the lowest point in the valley, lift us up and draw us up into his loving arms and he will restore us. Secondly, with Jesus gone, Peter returned to the life and love that he once knew which was fishing, and apart from admonishing him for the denial, he must have also felt that Jesus was about to question him as to why he would return to the life that he was called away from. But instead, Jesus asked Peter about the state of his heart towards him. First, Jesus asked him, Do you love me more than these? To which Peter said, Yes, Lord. You know that I love you. 
Jesus asked him a second time, and again he responded, Yes, Lord, you know that I love you. But when Jesus asked the question the third time, Peter felt hurt, possibly because he felt that Jesus was making a deliberate attempt to remind him of his thrice denial during the Passion. And he said to him, Lord, you know everything. You know that I love you. Peter was right in saying that Jesus knows all things, because in truth and in fact, Jesus already knew the state of Peter's heart. And this conversation was partially because Jesus wanted to ensure that Peter knew that he was truly forgiven for his past feelings, as well as to mend their relationship so that Peter could be restored to him, his first love. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus said, And I tell you, you are Peter, and on this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not prevail against it. Which brings us to the other reason that Jesus met with Peter specifically, and that was to charge him to feed his lambs, tend his sheep, and feed his sheep, which meant that he all he had all confidence in Peter to continue the mission of sharing his good news of salvation with the world, and it was also a fulfillment of what he had spoken over Peter. Beloved, Christ knows each of us by name and nature, just as he knows our every thought and the true reflections of all our hearts. Just like Peter said, Christ knows all things. He does not keep a record of our transgressions, and because his love for us is immeasurable, he sees beyond our flaws, failings, and our faults. Christ challenges us today to be ever mindful that life will bring us countless changing scenes, there will be seasons of testing and great trial. We may even have to pass through what will essentially feel like the valley of the shadow of death. But it is especially in these times that he will draw near to us, not to condemn or to cause us any more pain than we are already experiencing. But if we but lift up our eyes, we will come face to face with our Lord, who is there to gently remind us that he is alive, for not even death and the grave could restrain him. And sometimes he has to come and personally remind us of the call that he has placed on our lives. And if we keep going back to the life that he called us away from, and the places that he has already delivered us from, then we are woefully hindering his work and what has been predestined for our lives, because we are not in our rightful place, fulfilling our role in the building up of his future kingdom. Not only that, we will potentially miss out on all the eternal blessings that are already in store for us. Jesus Christ is also challenging us not to listen to the lies of the enemy, who wants nothing more than to stray us from the one whose love we can never measure, and to instead feast on his living word and on every word that he has spoken over our lives. Through the prophet Jeremiah in chapter 29 and verse 11, he says to us, For I know the plans I have for you, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you a hope and a future. In 1 Peter chapter 2 and verse 9, we are reminded that we are a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's own people, in order that we might proclaim the mighty acts of him who called us out of the darkness and into his marvelous light. Deuteronomy 31 verse 8 says to us, the Lord is the one who goes before us. He will be with us. He will not leave or forsake us. And we must not fear or be dismayed. Beloved, we are more than conquerors through him that loves us. 
and we do not have to live in fear we do not have to live in loneliness or defeat neither do we have to sit in our messes because christ has already paid a price for our sins and he will not only lift us up and reset our minds to the mission that he have called us to but he is more than able to keep us from falling and from losing our place in his eternal kingdom thirdly in that moment there was no room for Peter to run and hide, even if it meant having to take responsibility for what he did. I'm sure that Peter was ready to be relieved of the burden of his guilt and shame so that he could be fully reconciled with Christ and experience the kind of peace which Christ alone can give. Peter was given a clean slate and a charge to carry on the good work that Christ started among him and all the others. When trust has been broken, it can be a difficult place to come back from because it often triggers emotions and other underlying factors that can add fuel to the fire. But Jesus Christ leads by example when he reached out to Peter, one, because he loved him dearly, and two, because Peter was valuable to his present and future kingdom, which is also an example to us in being able to weigh all the factors in determining the steps towards rebuilding relationships that have been broken. It may not always be as easy as it was in the case of Jesus and Peter, because many of us are not always willing to set aside our pride or the fear of being rejected because the other person may very well be still struggling with trust issues. The other thing to note is that if persons are unwilling to accept responsibility or if they possess a spirit of stubbornness, it can also lead to non-reconciliation. Jesus Christ and Peter demonstrates to us that each must be humble enough to take responsibility as well as to accept the consequences of their actions. Both parties must purpose to allow the love of Christ to supersede any ill feelings and to bind them together in perfect harmony. When sin causes our trust with Christ to be broken, we too must not let our pride or any other negative emotion hinder us from seeking to be reconciled with Christ, who very often is already chasing after us, one, because of his great love for us, and two, because he wants to set us back on the path that he has purposed for us and to silence the enemy. During the refining process, the potter has to put his feet on the clay to make it pliable, after which it is placed on the wheel and the potter uses his hands to shape and mold it into a vessel. It is then placed in the fire. The final thing that the potter does is to paint the vessel and just like any other work of art, his signature or inscription is placed on it. Just like Peter, we may have to endure painful experiences before Christ is able to give us a clean slate because he may, be, he may have to literally place us under his feet, but this must be seen as a necessary part of the process of refining us for transitioning into the next stage or season of our lives. While these experiences may be painful, we must put our whole trust in Christ and Christ alone and allow him to mold, shape, and journey with us through the fire so that we can become vessels of honor. And even then, it does not mean that everything will fall into place or that the world will be kind to us. For in verses 18 and 19, Jesus speaks to the kind of death that Peter would endure for the sake of the cross. And similarly for us, we will have our own crosses to bear, but our great potter will not send out a vessel that is incomplete. 
which means that before he sends us out, he must first pour out the oil of his anointing on us, after which he will inscribe his name on us, his masterpiece. And lastly, he will place his royal seal and his glory on us. Jesus Christ, our good shepherd, is also issuing a charge to us in this present age to feed his lambs and to tend and feed his sheep, which is a call for us to live a life of service to him and others, to look after his flock by nurturing and caring for those under our charge, to ensure that they have a well-balanced diet of spiritual and physical food, to protect them from the wiles of the enemy, as well as to seek after and save those that are lost. The fact that Christ would entrust such a task to any of us is sometimes beyond our imagination. But it also proves that even a sinner saved by grace can be commissioned for the role of a shepherd. And so in closing, I appeal to you, brothers and sisters, by the mercies of Christ, that you will be filled with the knowledge of God's will in all spiritual wisdom and understanding, so that you may lead lives worthy of the Lord, fully pleasing to him, as you bear fruit in every good work, as you grow in the knowledge of God. May you be strong with all the strength that comes from his glorious power, and may you be prepared to endure everything with patience, while joyfully giving thanks to the Father, who has enabled you to share in the inheritance of the saints in the light. He has rescued us from the power of darkness, and transformed us into the kingdom of his beloved Son, in whom we have redemption, the forgiveness of sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
Christ asks us if we love him. If we say yes, then he says, take care of one another. This is our opportunity to make a difference, to live lovingly on the frontiers of his bright new world. And so may God bless the world in which you move and bless your home and bless your friends. May God bless the eyes with which you see and bless the ears with which you listen. May God bless the way you use your hands and bless the way you employ your tongue. As a bonus from the living God in Christ Jesus, grace, mercy and peace shall be yours today and always. And the people of God say, Amen. For being a part of our daily devotion. We trust it has been a blessing to you. Now together, let us hold fast to his word and may it dwell in all of us richly.